focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. NSE Finn Wills Season 5, powered by CNBC TV 18. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the launch of Season 5 of NSC Finviz on CNBC TV 18. I'm Ridhu Bhandari from Network 18, and on behalf of both NSC and CNBC TV 18, I welcome all of you to this historic venue, the world's fourth largest exchange by equity trading volume, National Stock Exchange. NSE has not just employed technology and increased transparency in trading, but is also well known for pioneering initiatives that spread valuable investor education. From schools and colleges to corporate campuses, NSE has a multitude of programs that reach out to financially educate the youth and bust myths around equity investing. Finviz is one such initiative that for the last four years has visited top companies across India. So to kick off the evening, I'll first request Lata Venkatesh, Executive Editor of CNBC TV 18, to please come up and deliver the welcome address. NSC and CNBC TV 18 are, in a sense, partners in crime. I don't think anybody else is more interested in advancing the investment culture, in converting savers into investors. There is a fascination about shares itself, but uh, just as NSC's uh, trading screen fascinates one about uh, uh, the ability to create wealth, what CNBC does is to tell, tell you how to channelize that energy, how long-term investments ought to be gleaned, and who are the investment gurus. That is day in and day out the philosophy. We have this program where we take FinWiz, under the brand of FinWiz, we visit various corporate campuses, sit with their corporate heads, as well as with financial advisors, and take employee questions, guide them into how you set goals and how you seek to achieve those goals. How much of money should be in risky assets? What is the re relation between risk and return? What are the advantages of compounding? What is the advantage of putting one rupee in a recurring deposit and keep it there for 20 years? What is the advantage of putting that one rupee in an equity mutual fund and watch it grow over the end of 20 years. And what CNBC TV 18 and uh, NSC are seeking to do is to just streamline that thought process so that more and more employees can take advantage of the elementary lessons of investing and the fruits of those investing, which can be enjoyed only years later. The first roadblock to investments very often is procrastination. Young people are of the opinion that investments are mostly done at, at the middle age. That's completely wrong, and I can remind you that uh, Warren Buffett started investing at the age of 11. Not that if you start doing that, you're going to become the next Warren Buffett, but just to re-emphasize the point, that start early, but start with an understanding of the markets. Young investors also have the benefit of taking measured risks with their investments instead of being excessively conservative at an early stage or being risk-averse and investing only in low-return investments. A good knowledge base is necessary not just to make sound investments, but also so that you're aware of market practices. And that will certainly help you uh, avoid falling prey to Ponzi schemes and misleading advice, because there can be a lot of mis-selling that goes on in the market. So you need to actually be aware of what you're buying and how markets work in order to make sensible, rational financial decisions. This is a personal journey that uh, we all are trying to learn from. Well, when did you start investing? What were your early mistakes or successes? So I started when I was in, the, in my late 20s, and, um, or actually must have been around 30, okay. when I was actually in the US. I didn't have any equity investments in India, uh, A, because um, at those days your salary wasn't really enough to even pay for your own expenses. And um, secondly, I was saving in order to get an education in the US. So from that perspective, I really didn't have any investments while I was uh, in India. You graduated from stocks to mutual funds, you would say? I would say so, because I think, uh, you know, one thing I would, uh, I would say is that if you invest in specific um, companies, you really need to understand the companies, you need to understand the sectors, and you need to have the time to follow those companies to decide when is the right time to sell. 
and I want to add uh, that I'm actually a very bad at selling. Mm -hmm. So some of those investments that I made way back in, I don't know, 95, 96, I held on till a couple of years ago. Not necessarily because those companies were doing well, partly because of just uh, lack of focus, lack of time, inertia. It's, it's easily said that you have to set your goal and work towards it. But is goal setting that easy? For instance, uh, what would you tell youngsters here? Should they first think of a house? Or should they first think of uh, uh, investing in mutual funds and making a pot of money? See, there is no generic answer, right? Each person has his own objectives, his own financial situation, his own family situation. Not everybody needs a house. Um, so even within your set of priorities, someone might be comfortable renting versus owning, depending on what else he wants to do. Uh, so I, I don't think there is a generic answer to it. I think you have to, like I said, A, understand yourself a lot better, and B, think about what you want to achieve in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and then decide how you want to allocate your savings. You know, you have seen several uh, decades of, uh, or at least uh, several years of uh, evolution of investment. Do you think Indians have changed for the good, for, uh, for the longer term? I think it's, uh, it's still early days to, to make that call. Uh, the reason I say that is because the real ramp up in um, um, allocation to mutual funds has happened really only in the last 18 months. Uh, prior to that, it, it was a lot less, but the last 18 months, yeah, right. and in the last 18 months, it has accelerated. Uh, the good trend is that there's been um, a steady increase in the SIPs that mutual funds have been getting, and that my hope is that people who are investing in SIPs understand the objective of an SIP, which is really to make systematic investments through cycles in a disciplined way where you put aside a small sum of money every month or every two months or whatever your cycle is, and you don't try and time the market. Vikram Nivey, it was always a pleasure Thank speaking you with much. you. Thank you very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. NSE Finn Wills Season 5, powered by CNBC TV 18. As young professionals, I'm sure all of you have dreams, dreams to succeed professionally, reach the top of the corporate ladder, perhaps travel the world, make more money, buy houses and cars of your choice, or start a business of your own? Well, Walt Disney once said that all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. So in season five of Finviz, we're encouraging you to dream on, and we'll try and work hard with you to achieve some of those dreams by setting goals. So let's find out exactly what just 5,000 rupees saved every month can achieve over a long period of time. Can we have the AV, please? Did you know that if you save 5,000 rupees a month, from the age of, let's say 20, when you started your first job, you would have accumulated close to 10 lakh rupees at the age of 30. Enough to buy your dream car. But what if you didn't exit and continue till the age of 40? Well, a sweet 40 lakh rupees. Enough to fund international education for your teenage child, one would guess, even if you accounted for inflation. And what if you still continued another 10 years? At the prime of 50, you would have a sweet 1 crore rupees. Time to pay off that niggling home loan, isn't it? But if you're one of those long-term guys who kept at it till 60, the value of your 5,000 a month would become a whopping 3 crore rupees. Need you worry about your retirement anymore? That's the power of compound interest. And we factored a modest 10% return. Did you know how much Nifty 50 the benchmark index of National Stock Exchange has given investors historically. Well, 18.55% last year, 11.6% annually over the last 5 years and almost 15% over the last 15 years. Your time has come, but remember, it's also running out, one day at a time. Your future is in your hands, or rather, in your investments. Define your goal today and work on achieving it. Up next, we are going to have a short panel discussion and uh, just as the stage is getting set up, let me also tell you that uh, we will be delving into the personal journeys of three 
corporate leaders who are going to share their personal investment and uh, financial journey mantras with us here today. So on the panel, we have Anaswami Vedish, Vice President, South Asia and Managing Director, GlaxoSmithKline Pharmaceuticals. Can we have you up on the stage, please? Debashish Nandi, Group CFO of Thomas Cook and Revati Roy, founder of Hey Didi. And once again, I'm going to request Lata to please come back on stage and have a round of question and answers with these three corporate leaders. Let me just start by asking your personal experience itself. Uh, uh, Vaidisha, you were saying that you were a cowboy investor as a young man. One of the things that I personally believe is that it's also to do with um, your, your upbringing, what kind of a culture that um, uh, you've imbibed. So though from a conservative background, even I grew up with, but there's a, there's a streak of wanting to try out some, something new. And I had good friends when I was a bachelor, including Ramdev Agarwal, we all grew up. And uh, at that time, Ramdev always used to be a very steady, uh, he used to be saying, you know, you've got to be careful about what you're doing. Um, he was doing chartered account at that time. So some of us used to come to hang around at Dalal Street and looking for all those highs and lows. It's like a real rush. And at a point of time, you know, you burn all your money and suddenly you have left with nothing, uh, whatever you're saving that you had. And those days, you know, it is not like today. There's so much of information. So is the advice uh, to uh, a youngster that uh, don't delve into shares till you have the time and the bandwidth to study every company, what, what would be the lesson of life? There's one principle I learned is, apart from stop loss, I think we also need to have stop gain. Yeah. Hmm. I think that is a very tricky area then, which I developed over a period of time and discipline of, as in when you meet your goal, I exited. Now there are people who made money out of investment and made some whopping, but that time I never have a regret. The, the fact that more than losing, I think it's also about how not to feel regret about the fact that you lost out. What about you, Debishish? What's the one lesson from your, I mean, what was your first investment and do you regret not having done it otherwise? You see, as, uh, as we were discussing a little while ago among ourselves, unfortunately, you know, unlike the people in this room, I belong to an era where uh, there's no mutual fund except uh, US 64 on the ULIPS. And uh, there's, not even, uh, there's not even a concept of dematerialization of shares. So everything was physical. So um, people in those days used to invest primarily in national saving certificates and fixed dollars and stuff like that. And if you're a little more adventurous, then you go and buy stocks directly. So to be honest, that's what I sort of started with. Uh, this was, I was in the mid-20s. Uh, obviously, salaries were much lower, and therefore, the investable surplus was, very, was much less. Were you investing in shares as early as 96, 97? Actually, I started even earlier than that. Yeah. So, so you but, went through the bad delivery period. Yes, of course. Signature mismatch period. Of course, <laughs> of course. But I burnt my fingers several times, but didn't stop me from getting into the market again and again. I think mutual funds are a wonderful way of getting into the market. If you don't know the market at all, I think uh, start with mutual funds. Keep on looking at it, keep on studying so that you understand the market. Well, uh, and Revati is one person whose biggest investment is her life. Her biggest investment is her enterprise. She's the only person I know who started off as a cab driver and went on, has gone on to establish an all-woman cabbie company. I think a round of applause is called for Absolutely. What I learned from you, Revati, is that uh, investment is best in yourself. Uh, what are your thoughts? So what really worked for me as, uh, you know, as an investment was, I possessed a degree, which was a master's in economics, and I also possessed a skill, which was driving because I'm a rally driver. The degree couldn't get me a job. That doesn't mean people shouldn't study. But the point is that my driving became an asset for me. And I decided that it was that driving, which I had just lost my husband. And I didn't get a job. Today, a lot of people tell me that you should have come to us that time. But I'm sure I wouldn't have got a job that time with them. OK, now let me come to what you all do for your employees. Uh, I'm very interested in knowing, uh, Revati, what you do 
But uh, before that, Vaidhi, since yours is you know, a set company, uh, do you all have uh, investment programs or do you encourage it through ESOPs uh, or encourage people to go from EPFO to NPS? Uh, as a company, what is the philosophy to guide your employees? How would you like it to change? First and foremost, we do have uh, employee stock options for our senior managers. Uh, basically, we give it through our uh, out of London stocks. Uh, but that's a one way of having some interest in, in the company. Second is that for obviously the uh, pension scheme or a PF as per the norm. So we do, of course, we, ours is a conservative company, so we put all the money in the most conservative bonds and stocks and was recommended by. But, but are you getting into NPS now? No, we haven't, so far we have not thought about it. Uh, but very interestingly that we, we are looking at creating an awareness uh, with our employees about savings. In fact, we are talking about getting people to come and uh, do a talk. We have the sessions, uh, what we call the let's talk sessions, where we bring people on uh, keeping the... Public finance experts, I mean, uh, yeah. personal finance experts. Yes. Uh, well, Debishesh, uh, what's the plan at Thomas Coker? Is there an active employee engagement in terms of savings investment culture? What we do is that, uh, uh, very much like GSK, uh, we use uh, our relationship with the bankers to bring in some financial planners who can address the people address the employees and help them. We have these sessions at you know day or two sessions where they can people who are interested in come in and talk and get something done. Uh, we also have a ESOP scheme for uh, both the senior, not only the senior management, but we also have it for uh, uh, people who are high performers. So that's a that's a way of rewarding them as well as sort of stock options. Stock options, yes. Well, uh, Revati, uh, you have a category of employees who are perhaps just initiated. I mean, you said you uh, train people in slums, girls from slums in driving. Uh, what do you do first, open Jandhal accounts? Uh, uh, do you pay them by check or do you pay them by UPI? Uh, how do you initiate them into savings and investment? So I'm a great follower of uh, digital payments. You know, I hardly have any cash with me anytime. So we, um, the category that you very rightly put, the category that we deal with is uh, nothing like the people sitting here. It is the less fortunate and uh, in technical terms they are all below poverty line. Because very rarely would you see, you know, an inverted comma driver wanting to come from a good family. I mean, they'd rather work at a KPO and earn less and my driver earns more. But the point is that they don't, a lot of people at that point of time, at least in 2007, didn't want to become a driver. So what I always felt, I always still feel and I did feel over the last decade that when a woman from, a girl woman comes from the below poverty line and she has to get out of the house, there has to be a very good reason for her to, you know, get out of the house. If there's a brother and sister who, are, who both have got the job on the same day, the brother can pick up his bag and go out to work with no worries. But when a girl is getting out, she really has to worry about where the milk is going to be kept, where the child is going to be, where the mother is going to be. There are problems. And there is, it's not to blame anybody, so but there are problems. To therefore, uh, make them, you know, introduce an idea like yes. recurring savings so deposit what we do is or mutual funds. The first step, Lata, for us was that we will not take them on contract. We will take them as employees. Hmm. Because the minute I take them as employees, I have to provide for Provident Fund. I have to provide for ESIC, which means that she can go back home and say that my working is going to get medical facilities for the entire family. And PF is a saving. So that's how we initiated it. And we have a lot of financial inclusion programs from different people in our organization every week where we try to induct you know, the concept of saving into them, be it 100 rupees be it 200 rupees, because that's all that they can do right now. I would give a round of applause even for this. We are at a stage where a lot of CEOs actually are contracting out work so that they don't have to pay a PF. So uh, it's certainly yeah. extremely uh, creditable of Revati that you initiate. Yeah, to initiate this habit. Uh, 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 I mean, there are some mutual fund company, I think it was Mirin Bharve who first said that, that uh, they would even think of uh, uh, a mutual fund uh, which is tailored for those of us who would want to save on behalf of uh, people who are, you know, working for us as cooks or as uh, maids. Uh, well, uh, it, it was a pleasure speaking to all three of you. 
and we do hope that uh, this lessons that we have learned from you is going to be carried on and that uh, you also are going to participate in FinViz and carry forward lessons of investment. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Vaidish, Devishish and Revati. NSE FinWiz Season 5, powered by CNBC TV 80. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.